So I wanted to uh, take some voice notes uh, about why I think, uh, even as a young person, I was so attracted to um, the music of Bob Dylan and also and Neil Young and other artists like that, and specifically why I was really attracted to the stage show that actually Dylan puts on. Um, if you look at the stage show the way he does it in the '90s forward, I thought it was. I actually like his later his latter-day stuff more than I like his younger stuff. And one reason for it is because if you look at his latter-day stage show as it is right now, as rough as his voice has gotten and everything, what I always really appreciated about it was just the absolute uh, maturity of it and the gravity of it and just how um, almost it seemed really dark. So I tried to make some comments about Jack White and everything and how I think Jack White put on a pretty dark show at times. But when you look at Dylan, sometimes I watch his show and it's just like, so phenomenally dark and so serious and uh you know so grave and to me that's not a bad thing i think it's a good thing and one thing i think that struck me as so strange about this years years ago was that um you just don't see this anywhere else in the music world like even now i still go trying to search for another sort of act that can give me that same hit of whatever it is that the modern Dylan show gives me with its darkness and its gravity and all this. And it's just nowhere to be found. There's really nowhere else that you can get that same shot of maturity. That You can get that same shot of like these wise old man stories and like these kind of like tortured stories almost really sometimes that he tells. There's really nowhere else you can get that. Unless of course you look at country music and some of the older artists who came from there. I mean if you look at Johnny Cash, you get closer to a sort of Dylan latter day thing. If you look at some of the Guy Clark stuff, I've noticed you you get it too, where they wear these dark and somber like black suits and everything. And a lot of people might say, well why on earth would anyone young want to even be involved with that at all? Well I think there were a few reasons for it. And I think it was really just because <clears throat> I mean to me, as awesome as music being a celebration or music being a happy thing is, uh I just don't think that that was ever really my actual reality. I was never really, um, not to say I wasn't really a happy person, but I was just, I was always kind of somber, I guess, you know, and, and um, quiet and uh, a little reserved. So for me, when I looked at music, that was, I, I was attracted to that. And I tend to see that I don't really remain interested for very long if I can't follow that sort of somber train, because that's just what I'm attracted to the most. I follow it if I'm writing a, a, a story or if I'm reading stories or a film or anything. I tend to like something that's dark like that. And it, But at the same time, I didn't like metal because, again, that was almost too excited. I liked this quiet darkness, and that's really, I find, only there with Dylan. So when I, but the reason I like him isn't even really because he has all those classic songs from the 60s. I literally actually like him more for his latter-day show, and I started to realize this more and more as the years went on, but the stumbling block was that I couldn't find it anywhere else. And so this is where I want to connect now. I want to show uh, my listener this idea that I eventually came up with about it, and what I think it is is that, you see, we don't really think of a lot of these artists as being connected to anything besides themselves, I think, a lot of the time. So we don't think... But Dylan is fundamentally an American artist, and uh, it's it, and so is are all the other popular artists that we like these days. And the thing about this country is, everyone now just thinks, well, the internet has been created and television set exists, and everyone knows everything about the entire world. And they think almost that the age of a country, I think, doesn't matter anymore. But what the thing is, is I realize now, as I, I look at this all, I can see the age of America standing out clear as anything. And what I see is a young age, and you really see that in the way we we receive music here as a whole culture, because the main reason we don't have more mature acts going around is, I, I now realize, is because that this is actually a young country, and it's filled constantly um, with young people, with people who think in a young way, so yes, it's true, people are You know, obviously there's old people who live in in every country on earth, but the thing with America is that when I say people are young here, I mean they're young in the sense that they're disconnected from a long, deep cultural heritage. So, for instance, when you step into the country, you get you hit a you have a um, what would you call it a restart point? It's like you reboot. So my family rebooted 
when they came here, and they've been here since 1910. My family's been in America since that year. But you reboot because you lose everything, especially if you're speaking another language. You reboot automatically as Americans. So then you're young. Your family outlook is young. Everything about you is young. So now the way this connects to songs is that um, well, obviously if you're if you're coming from a family that has no real deep cultural history that goes beyond like the 20th century into the 19th century the 18th century well you're obviously not going to appreciate that sort of thing especially if the language is kind of new for you so like what we kind of have here is there are old songs for instance if you look at italian or you look at french or you look at spanish you'll see that these people and these cultures not necessarily in mexico i suppose but if you look over at spain you'll see that they have these songs that just go so far back. And they all kind of appreciate them collectively because they all feel like those songs belong to, to them because they're in their language, you see. So if they don't struggle with this mature thing as much as we do, because what happens here is that though we have old songs, the issue is that they're all coming from um, the country world and the folk world and people don't, look at those as their songs as Americans. They look at them more as these are songs from a country world in the Midwest or in the South that doesn't belong to me. You see what I'm trying to say? So a Frenchman finds an old French song from 1755 and he says, oh, this is my song. It's in French. This is this belongs to me. This is a part of my culture. But an American, in my opinion, finds an American kid from you know who was born in 1996 finds a song like Oh Susanna that was in, that's an authentic American song from the 19th century and he interprets it as oh this isn't my song this is the song of you know someone in Nebraska or someone in Montana or something this doesn't belong to me this isn't mine you get what I'm trying to say so there's this cultural disconnect that happens and this is radically altering the entire way that we interpret music because instead of uh, allowing ourselves to look at it as something that mature people do and then it's for adults and everything, we actually have now relegated it here. It really happened seriously here to this totally youthful thing that almost gets like reborn every generation. And what ends up happening is that uh, you look at the world like the, the country artists and they seem strange to a bunch of to a modern people because no one, everyone's like, well, I don't understand what's going on down in the country world where there's like these 60 year old guys are playing guitars. Like, what the heck is this? There's 70 year old people playing them. And like, oh, yeah. that's weird because the American mindset is literally that that's all for young people. They don't understand, but this is like a mature thing. But there's no concept of that, except in our country world, because they're the ones who have been in this country the longest, so they've been able to develop this um, perspective of this, their songs are, are the most mature songs. The fact of the matter is that the most mature songs in this country are, in fact, the country songs. The other songs are not very mature. They're all tinted with, you know not just commercialism, but also with, uh, you know, I don't know, just being young, being an idiot, and, you know, and, and that's, I'm not saying it's bad, that's fun, it's wonderful, it's so fantastic, I, I'm so happy for those people, it's just that, that isn't, own, that isn't the end-all, be-all of songwriting, it's supposed to be something that's able to mature, and you are able to see that an artist, a lot of these artists in this country are having a lot of trouble, I think, aging with their work and maturing with it because there's just there's no nothing that exists beforehand that that shows you that that's okay to do we have literally no cultural examples <laughs> that shows you that you can do that you know what i'm saying so our greatest freedom which is being youthful is also a curse because it, it makes it so that people can't age because no one here remembers anything you see because not only do we not remember it but we feel that it doesn't even belong to us because, again, that is the most important fact that when a Frenchman looks back to 1755 or he looks back to 1630, anywhere you go back in their period and they see a song written in French and they sing it, they know that's my song. They don't feel, oh, this is connected only to Nebraska. They don't feel that this is connected to some particular region or something. They feel this is my song. I can play it. Versus we hear, oh, we can't, we don't play those. And and the way this has been interpreted is that a lot of people will look at a song and look at old folk songs as though they're just automatically lame, they're this and that, and they're stupid, and so on and so forth. They're re this is actually a bias. They're actually biased against the songs. And what do you buy? Why would you be biased against something? Well, you bias because you don't feel like it belongs to you. It's something alien to you. So I think in. In older European countries, they don't feel that, or any older country at all. But I can only use Europe as an example because that's all I know. So they're saying, they're like, they don't look at it like that. 
So actually, what's really interesting is that when you follow the Bob Dylan line, or at least when I did, and then I was using him as this mirror that I was holding up, and I searched through the old European countries and their artists, what I started to find was that I found dozens of Bob Dylans that they had produced that weren't even famous, not too terribly famous, but they were each European country, uh, England, Spain, France, Italy, Germany. Germany, not so much, they're not really big on music there, but basically every European country had produced dozens of very mature artists in just the same way that Dylan was, because Dylan, the thing that's really different about Dylan is that he's an all-around artist, so he's, he encompassed the youthful world of rebellion and rock and roll, whilst at the same time also, encom- and it, it also encompassing a political rebellious viewpoint, and the third point was he also had that mature sort of country thing going on. He literally encompassed all three of the things that everyone else has kind of splintered off doing one thing. I mean, the Stones have almost lost all relevance because they never really did serious songs. They did a few, they tried, but they didn't really do them. So they're, an act- they're actually now being looked at in the same way that someone like Jay-Z is going to be looked at 30 years from now. He's just a completely, he's just for youths. That's how I think he'll be interpreted. And I think a lot of people would agree. Um... And the, you know, that's how they'll be. That's how they're interpreted right now. And if you look at, um, you know, you look at the country artists. Well, they're interpreted as just they're only speaking for this one thing. They don't tend to rebel. They don't really tend to say something that's really politically crazy or something like Dylan did. He tried. He pushed politics forward and everything. So the thing is, when you look over at Europe, you do see that they they produced. Well, we produced only one or two. They produced ten. You know what I'm saying? In the 1940s, and the 50s, and the 60s, and the 70s, they were they're just been producing them because, and it's all going back to this one major detail because they're older countries, so they understand, and they're not they don't have a problem connecting with tradition. We have this huge problem with tradition because we don't know what the fuck our traditions are. We don't have any. We literally don't have any. You see what I'm saying? We only have one tradition, and that's the cowboy tradition, and we all don't feel like we can grab that because it doesn't seem like it belongs to all of us and there's also a lot of deep deep uh controversy and you know anger about uh what happened with that and how they were you know with the problem with the natives and all this so there's all these fucking dilemmas that get in the way of, of uh i think the typical modern american trying to even enjoy that because they're like well my family got here in 1970 you know, so um, why am I going to listen to some cowboy who's trying to paint a picture of, uh, you know, 1820s America? It doesn't even belong to me. I was in fucking Sweden. You know, I, my family was in Sweden versus a Swede. Well, OK, tell the story about 1820s Sweden. My family was here. So I'm assuming, you know, my family was here in Sweden. We've been here for, you know, a thousand years. I mean, I was talking to a guy in Sweden, not Sweden, uh, Norway. Yeah, I think it was Norway. No, Denmark. That's what it was. I get those all confused. I was talking to a guy in Denmark. Uh, a few months ago, right? Just to to show you how deep back their history goes, right? Now, in America, usually you talk to somebody and their cultural family line, the furthest back it could possibly go, but they've probably traced it, is to like, you know, 1700s or something. And that's rare. I mean, most Americans I've ever met can only trace it to about 1920. Or like I said, 1910. And really, you can't trace it beyond that. This guy in Denmark... Trace his family line all the way back to the year 900. Not 1900, but 900. That's how far back. And this was just a regular guy who lived there. He wasn't, wasn't living in a castle or nothing like that. He was just a regular fucking guy living in an apartment in Denmark. And he was able to actually get the papers and trace his family back to the year 900. Because they were never cut off, you see. And so again, we just look at tradition completely differently. And... um I don't know, and I think that's why I connected with that, because I saw, whoa, this is actually serious, I can't believe this, this guy actually said something, Uh, he wasn't just being interpreted as this idiot, because to me, music doesn't really look all that attractive if you can't have an all-around face. As fun as it is to do celebratory songs or to do childish songs, it's simply not fun if those are the only songs you're allowed to do or those are the only songs that you're going to set out to write. And a lot of the times when I meet with other musicians, they're kind of like, what are you doing writing these songs that are like, sound like they're for 70-year-olds or something? It's like, dude, that's a real song, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have that conversation, right? So why can't you put it in a song? There's this disconnect, though. 
work with these people here in the, in this culture, where you can you can have a serious conversation, but it's never supposed to be inserted into the songs. Well, that's why all these problems are arising, because songs are the national conversation. So when you don't put any fucking thing into them, and all you sing about is drinking beer and getting drunk and shattering bottles at the Walmart parking lot, as I always say, you're never going to manage to push the political conversation forward. They have to be inserted into the songs. If you don't put them in there, you're never going to move it forward because that's how we have a conversation. It doesn't matter what country you're in. So, um, I mean, that's what I have to say about that now. Uh, Hopefully somebody enjoyed this. Ciao.